I have former CIA Larry Johnson. Larry, thank you so much for coming on the show. Always a pleasure, Stephen. Let, let's actually uh, come back home domestically. Um, where, where do you see this Texas border crisis going? Is the Texas border, is Biden now going to shift gears into protecting his image and, and remaining in power and, and ignore, you know, Texas being defiant to uh, federal mandates to let illegals into the country? Uh, or where, where do you where do you see this Texas border crisis going? No, yeah, no, I think it's, it's become now pretty simple. Uh, you know, Greg Abbott did nothing for almost three years. Could have, didn't do anything to stop it. Uh, other Democrats, mayors, uh, Eric Adams in New York City and Muriel Bowers in Washington, D.C. And I forget the name of the clown run in Chicago. Johnson. You know, the, the, uh, oh, uh, I should know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No relation. No yeah, relation. Yeah, no relation. <laughs> um, that, uh, you know, they were not hollering and screaming. Well, now everybody's hollering and screaming. It's not just Greg Abbott. And Abbott's got the backing of 26 other governors. And uh, then you've got the Democrat mayors. Uh, they're coughing it up now. They, they can't stand this. So something's got to be done. So now it's become a bipartisan political issue. Stop the illegal migrants. And uh, Biden is going to be forced to do a 180. Or as Annalena Baerbach in Germany calls it, a 360. <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> but no, he's going to have to do uh, an about face and now try to enforce uh, li limitations and restrictions on people coming into the country because. It is crossed over the Democrats. There are many, many Democrats now are upset about it and, and, and not feeling safe. And in particular, his images come out of New York City showing these migrants beating up these two cops. And then that, uh, you know, that that fat, despicable attorney, uh, you know, district attorney uh, brag, just let him go. Refuse to prosecute. Didn't hold him. And people say, okay, this this has got to stop. Because otherwise you're turning, you know, you're going to turn it into a a, a free fire zone. They, they, they already had an incident again yesterday in Times Square. Some guy tried to rob some uh, woman. Uh, she gets shot. Uh, there's a gun battle in Times Square with, again, there's one of these illegal migrants. They're still looking for him. Uh, the other day, uh, this crazed homeless guy, follows a woman off the subway in New York City and just literally kicks the shit out of her. And I mean, kicking her, pummeling her. Nobody had come to her aid. There was one guy that walked through the turnstile, saw it. Uh, the crazy man turned towards him and the other guy ran away. So, I mean, you got city full of cowards, bullies, criminals, perverts. And, you know, anybody that wants to go there, I had someone offer to say, hey, you know, we'd like to have you come up for an interview. We'll fly up. I said, no, thanks. You can't you can't pay me enough money to go to New York City these days. Sorry. Unless you allow me to go with my firearm. Yeah. If I can go with my concealed carry, okay, I'll do it. But otherwise, not going. Yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. Uh fi final thing. Uh Scott Ritter has said putting military on the southern border is the most dangerous thing a president could do to protect the country. Uh, Colonel Douglas McGregor has said it's the best solution would be to put military presence on the Southern border. What, what are your thoughts on military on the Southern border? So let's come back and ask the more fundamental question. What is the purpose of our military? Why do we have an army? Why do we have a Navy an air force and a Marine Corps? What we is it got if is it governed by any clear strategy? In theory, I believe our military's primary purpose is to defend and protect the United States of America. Okay, protect it against what? Well, we've we've ginned up all these imaginary threats overseas that we need to go spend, you know, literally over a trillion dollars on to fight needless wars that uh accomplish nothing in terms of showing up our security while the border is wide open. So yeah, I'm with Doug on this. 
uh, you know, activate the military to uh, secure the border because uh, it's an invasion. Not everybody's coming across with a gun or a tank or a truck, but it's an invasion. Stop the invasion. Uh, the other thing you do is you, know, you, you tell you shut down all the border crossings with Mexico. And you tell the Mexican president, these are not opening for any reason until you stop the influx of people transiting your territory to come to the United States. Not opening it. Uh, the drug traffickers would have that president straightened out real quick because they want the drugs to continue to flow into the United States. That kind of shutdown would severely hamper their commercial enterprise. Uh, so uh, th those are a couple of the steps that need to be taken. The, uh, you know, but apart from dealing with the immediate issue of the border, what the United States really needs right now is to step back and figure out what is it that we need? What kind of military do we want? What's our requirement? Right now, we've got troops stationed at over 600 bases around the world. That's insane. We've got we've got troops based in Syria uh, at two at least two different bases, and their mission ostensibly is to fight ISIS. Except we're not fighting ISIS; we're guarding oil. The oil part of the oil is being provided to Israel. Oil that's going in and being sold to Turkey, that Turkey's in reselling for a profit. Same for Israel. So you know the the, the purpose of the U.S. military is not to go out and be the gendarme. For oil companies, uh, let the oil companies hire their own damn security. Don't put that on the U.S. taxpayer. Yeah, is there any chance that the the U.S. military is used to keep the strength of the the U.S. petrodollar? Oh yeah, absolutely. Of course, you, you know. See what we're witnessing right now is well, I call it the limits of U.S. military power. Um, we cannot stop the Houthis from launching anti-ship missiles. We've been bombing. We've been running this operation in the Red Sea to stop the Houthis since December 19th, okay? We're coming up on two months. We haven't stopped it. And in fact, one of the British destroyers that was there has been run off. They claim they had technical difficulties. I think that means they probably got hit with a missile, didn't want to admit it. <laughs> but uh, they had damage and have to sell off. And yet the United States, with all these airstrikes, with all these bombing campaigns, we're not we're not reducing the Houthi will. And the Houthis are accomplishing their mission, which was to prevent ships from going in and out of Israel. And now they've added to that U.S. and U.K. ships. To the point that it was, uh, I, I, I don't recall if it was Israel or the United States, one of them tried to go get their get their ship flagged as a Chinese ship because uh, the Houthis are allowing Chinese, Saudi ships. Any, any other ship can go through. Just no Israeli. If you're owned by, by Jews, you don't get to go. By U.S., by, by Americans, by Brits, you don't get to go. Everybody else, free to pass. You know, they're, they're the only ones, candidly, who are actually doing something of substance to try to... Uh, uh, stop the Israeli uh, murder of Palestinians. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Wow. Well, we could go on and on for probably yeah. a, a couple hours. I saw a, an interview the other day that lasted six hours. I was like, man, I don't even have time to watch that. So, good we'll be, Lord. Yeah. We'll be respectful of your time and, and the viewers. But yeah, you, thank you for coming on and, and sharing your insight on. Uh, you know what's going on in the in the Red Sea with Russia, Ukraine, Europe, and also back here at home with our our United States president, uh, Larry Johnson. Is the best way for people to follow you still sonar twenty one dot com? That's it. Okay, it's got all the all the relevant links there. Yeah, I'll put a link down below. Uh, appreciate you coming on. I hope you have a great rest of your day. All right, Stephen. Thanks so much.